Hi, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to use Logger Pro to analyze a photograph of an object's motion. So the first thing you want to do is open up Logger Pro. You can see I have a blank Logger Pro file here. Um, I've also downloaded the photo that I want to analyze. I have it on my desktop over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to in Logger Pro, I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to choose Picture, and of my two options I'm going to choose Picture with Photo Analysis. So once you do that, it asks you to locate the document that you want, and it's this uh, drawing of a golf ball. Once you do that, you probably want to make the picture <clears throat> as large as you can make it. And you can see over here you have all of these icons to use for editing. So the first thing you're going to need to do is tell Logger Pro a sense of scale. So you're going to need something in your photograph that you know how large it is. In this, we're just going to go ahead and use the, uh, the scale on this y-axis because it's marked height. I'm going to assume those are meters. So what I'm going to do is over on your icons, if you hover over them, it tells you, but I'm going to choose this one that looks like a ruler, and that'll let you set the scale. So I'm going to go from zero, and I'm going to click and just start dragging, and you see how it gives me this green line. I'm going to extend that all the way up to 15. So whatever you have in your photograph, whether it's a meter stick or a ruler, or if you know the size of the object itself, you can use any of those things. You have to know the size of one object. So once I uh, let go of that, it asks me how, how long that distance is that I just measured. So I'm going to change this to 15. Now for this photograph, I don't know anything about this object. I just found this on the internet. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave the units as meters. Uh, but if it was in inches, I would change that to inches, whatever you want to do, and hit OK. Now once you do that, the next thing you want to do is uh, tell Logger Pro where the origin is for what you're doing. So up here, this button that looks has two green axes and like a red dot. I'm going to click on that, and now anywhere I click, it is going to put in an XY origin axis. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it on the photograph where the origin is. And if I wanted to, I could tilt this. Um, if I wanted to move it, I could move it around however I want. Um, but for our intents and purposes, uh, let's just leave it kind of where it is. And actually, I think I'm going to do it over again so that it's straight. Okay, so now, once you do that, you're ready to plot points. This red dot right here um, on your tools is the add point button. Now once I do this, I have to be careful because everywhere I click on this screen, Logger Pro is going to add a point. So basically what it's doing is it's treating this image that we have imported as a XY kind of uh, plot. So if I click right here, it is going to make an XY coordinate um, for that position. So I don't want it there. What I want to do is I want to find uh, choose a location on the object that is in your in your picture and you're going to want to click on that object in kind of sequential order the way it moved in the same place every time. So I'm going to choose how about the top of the ball. So I'm going to choose the top and I'm just going to click to add a point and you can see that up here it went ahead and gave me an XY coordinates for that point. That's an X position along the horizontal axis and a Y position on the vertical axis. Now I'm going to go to the next image and do the exact same position on the object, which is the very top. And I'm trying to get in the center, so I do the exact same position. And I'm just going to keep adding these. And I'm going to continue all the way until I get to the, where I'm out of images. And the more careful you are with this, as far as putting the exact same position every time, the truer your data will be to the actual uh, data that matches that object's motion. Okay, so once I do that, I'm done. Uh, just to, so I don't want to inadvertently add additional points, I want to unselect this, so I'm just going to click on the little select point, the arrow tool, and really what that does is just lets me do whatever I want without adding more points. So once I've added points to my photograph, I'm pretty much done with it. So now what I can do is I can go up here to page, I can go to auto arrange, just to make everything all nice and neat. And you can see that it automatically gives me a Y versus X graph. So that's, that's pretty looking, but it's not very useful. What I really want is time. And you can see on here, on my um, data table, <clears throat> I don't have a time column, so I need to add that. So we've done that before, so go up here to data, go to new manual column. Let's call it time, T in seconds. And once you do that, I could then start plugging in all of my numbers. Now, this picture goes from 0 to 18 seconds. So I could type in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 8, I can keep going, but I don't really have to. 
if you double click on this, or you can do this when you make it, you can have Logger Pro automatically generate value. So I'm gonna check that box. I wanna start at zero and I wanna end at 18 seconds. So just do that and it automatically creates those values for me. Now for your pictures, you're using the uh, strobe cycle rate, how many flashes per minute or second the strobe does. So you're gonna have to figure out your time and how many um, seconds go by between each image. So it won't be one second for yours because the objects aren't moving for that long. Okay, so now this, I can change my graph if I want to. I can click down here to time. So now I can see my Y position versus time. And I could also look at my X position versus time. So right off the bat, you can see that this object looks like it's moving with constant velocity in the X dimension, so along the ground. But in the vertical dimension, the Y dimension, it is definitely not moving with constant velocity, which makes sense if you think about it. So what we really want to do now is look at uh, velocity versus time graphs. So you've done this before, and I made you guys do it the pain in the butt way, which was to basically make a column for velocity and find the change in x and divide by the change in time and keep doing that for each, each cell on your data table. Now I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to data and we're going to go up to new calculated column. So we've been using manual columns, you want to do calculated column. So once I do that, let's look at the velocity in the x dimension. So let's call that V, how about VX, and it's going to be in meters per second. Now before you had to do this manually, now I'm going to show you the easy way. If you think about what the equation is for velocity, it's delta X over delta T. So under functions right here, I'm going to select that and I'm going to choose delta. And then under variables, this is the columns right here. So I can choose whatever I want. We want to do delta X. So I'm going to choose X. And then now I want to divide, so use your little slash by delta T. And hit done. And you can see it gives me a X velocity column, which now I can go ahead and look at the graph if I want to. So choose X velocity. And you can see this is very, very messy. And remember what it does is it automatically scales in to make your data look all, you know, what Logger Pro thinks is pretty. If we double click on this graph, a much better way to do it is to auto scale from zero instead of just auto scaling. And you can see now, especially if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that my, my data is much more uh, clustered along a horizontal line than it, than it looked like a second ago. And so you can also look back at this, and based on the fact that that looks like a pretty linear slope, um, I would argue that this object in the X dimension is moving with a constant velocity model. But now we also want to do the Y velocity, the vertical velocity. So um, let's go up here again to data, go to new calculated column. We're going to do the exact same thing. But instead of doing delta x over delta t, we're going to do delta y. So our y position, vertical position, divided by change in time. And you can see it gives me a new graph there. So now if I want to look at this, vertical velocity, you can see here it is. And for the most part on this, this looks like a pretty linear slope, which means that this object is moving with a constant acceleration of negative whatever that slope is right there. Um, so now if you want to, you can make this all nice and pretty. You can go to insert another graph. Uh, you can go to page, auto arrange, it'll put everything in nice and neat, and you get to choose what you want to look at. I would say the logical things, if I'm going to describe this object's motion, would be to look at the X position to show that this looks like it's moving with a constant velocity in the X dimension, and the Y velocity showing that it looks like it's moving with a constant acceleration in the vertical or the Y dimension. So this is an example of an object moving through the air, falling and moving to the right, that is doing both constant velocity and constant acceleration. It has different motion in each of those two dimensions. All right, I hope that helped. Thanks. Daddy.